Hi there, Steve here, Steve Kaufman, and today I want to begin by making an, a confession. I am a serial language learner. Serial implies maybe not serious. I try or have tried to learn a lot of languages. And the reason I'm making this confession, and you know, I just had a look here without trying very hard. I have these books on learning Czech. I haven't really looked at this ASCII mail for Czech because I have other materials that I have used. Uh, I do intend to get into Turkish, but again, I'm waiting. We do now have uh, mini stories in Turkish uh, on links. So I'm going to get a Turkish. I bought a, some material on Croatian. We don't have Croatian at link uh, and lots of others. And so I'm a bit of a dilettante and, and this kind of came home to me. Oh, before I get any further, I should show you my t-shirt because August the 21st to the 26th in Montreal is the Long Fest. I encourage you to come. It's a lot of fun. You learn stuff and you just have a wonderful, wonderful, however many days, four or five days. Look it up on the, uh, you can Google for it, L-A-N-G-F-E-S-T, Long Fest. And uh, somewhere there's a website. Hope to see you there. So uh, the reason I'm talking about my tendency to, uh, you know, dabble in a lot of languages is that uh, on my last, in my last video, I finished off speaking in Russian and Ukrainian with Alexander. And so there were mixed comments about my levels in these languages. And of course, I haven't really been spending any time on them over the last, say, year or so. Uh, and there were lots of mistakes. And someone said, you know, uh, your Russian brings, uh, makes my blood boil or words to that effect. Uh, you know, you don't seem to realize that there are cases in Russian. Do you even know what a genitive case is and stuff like that? Which is a bit surprising because people may criticize, but not with that kind of a tone. And then it turns out that this guy was an Englishman, which explains it. Not because he's an Englishman, but because he's a non-native speaker. So people who have achieved a high level in a particular language seem to want to point out shortcomings in other people's use of that language. It's not something that I like to do, but that's, you know, part of it. Uh, however, it, it makes me realize that, that in language learning, if you pursue quantity like I'm doing now, uh, it's difficult to maintain quality. Because as I've said many times, language learning is a function of your attitude and the time you spend. So if you spend time on language B, C, D, E, then you can't spend that time on language A. And in all of my languages, I could improve. Even my best language, which is French, there was a period about four or five years ago when I listened to a lot of French audiobooks, French literature. And that brought the level of my French up to a higher level than ever before. Even though I studied in France for three years, I wrote all my exams in French, I was totally submerged in a French uh, environment. These few years ago, when I devoted myself to listening to French literature in audiobooks, it elevated the level of my French. And I know that I could do the same with my Japanese. My ability to understand literature in Japanese is not great. I have shortcomings in vocabulary there. Uh, I could greatly improve my Japanese if I devoted the time to it. The same is true of my Chinese. I'm so aware of areas that I would like to work on in Chinese, my Spanish and so forth. So necessarily I have, let's say my top five languages, the languages that I mentioned just now, I'm confident that I don't make a lot of mistakes. When I move into Swedish, German, Italian, Portuguese, Cantonese, Russian, there's going to be more and more and more mistakes. Now, why don't I then devote myself to improving in those languages rather than exploring new languages? Good question. However, when I think of the enjoyment that I derive from knowing Ukrainian and, and even Polish now, I had a chat in Polish and I spent a bit more time with Polish and Czech and Slovak, which are slightly different. It's fun. And then I thought to myself, you know, and I'm, I'm working on my Arabic, but uh, then I said, geez, I'm, I'm kind of losing my Romanian and Greek. So the last two days while doing dishes and working around the house, I've been listening to our Greek mini stories. And just now I was on the treadmill working out 
and I was doing reading uh, some of the Greek many stories and then just for fun I switched to Romanian and so I was doing the same thing in Romanian and it's a wonderful feeling because you go back to an old friend you realize at first that you have you know a slipped quite a bit but very quickly it comes back this is my experience and you have the feeling that with a little bit of effort you could bring it past where it was before which gets back to something I've talked about before uh, the sort of cognitive research which, which shows that things that we forget leave for a while and come back to and learn again we end up learning them better so for all of these reasons having plowed forward in some of these newer language languages doesn't mean that I can't go back later and work on some of my better languages to improve them if I want uh, some of the languages that I have the least good grasp on like the Greek and the Romanian I can at any time go back to and in the meantime I'm exploring Arabic and eventually I'll take Arabic to a level where for example once we get Farsi at link and um, apparently we're quite close to getting 50 many stories I'm gonna go and do some Farsi because there are more opportunities to use Farsi here in North Vancouver than uh, or in West North Vancouver than is the case with Arabic which doesn't mean I won't go back to Arabic again I'll just continue exploring and I also want to do Turkish because in in my mind Turkish Arabic Farsi that's kind of that Middle East Central Asian part of the world that I want to get a better feel for but also in terms of language exploration because I love our many stories I think they're a fabulous way to learn languages because again something that I've said before the brain likes novelty but the brain likes repetition or put another way the brain likes things that are familiar so if you have 60 stories that are essentially the same in all languages you have a familiar environment so it becomes almost like me getting on the treadmill it's the same treadmill every day I'm not going anywhere but I'm training so you can go into these many stories whether you are a beginner or whether you're going back to refresh they're always there it's a comfortable familiar environment and you can even go into languages that you haven't studied for example my Romanian stories we didn't have the many stories when I was doing Romanian I get in there and I'm totally at home in the Romanian many stories uh, picking up words that I'd forgotten and I went into Dutch and Danish many stories and because I'm familiar with the, the stories themselves and plus my knowledge of Swedish and German and so forth very quickly you know I have the feeling that if I were to devote any time to these languages then I could I could you know get a certain level in them I have to admit that when I listen to a Danish movie I struggle to understand what they're saying uh, even though it's very it's quite similar to Swedish uh, even more so is the case with with Dutch obviously but I think with a little effort with these mini stories I could at least get to where I could understand movies so all of this exploration is fun so the dilemma is am I willing to sacrifice this exploration in order to try to achieve a higher level of perfection in some of the languages that I already know you know better that's just a dilemma uh, you know it's it's like going to a banquet and trying to figure out whether you want to eat uh, you know the fish or the steak I mean uh, both are good uh, so it depends on your mood uh, you know and and certainly I felt that I was you know the Arabic is difficult so it's a chore and for me it was a real treat to be able to go back into the Greek and the Romanian and but I am going to kind of forge forward with the Arabic so I confess that I am a serial language learner uh, I am nevertheless a serious language learner and uh, to quote uh, Kat Olam she said that language is one of the few things that's worth learning even poorly so if you want to perfect your level in language A and stay there that's fine that's great if you want to explore languages I guess the extreme example is our friend Moses McCormick uh, that's fine uh, it's it's there you know something that that we can enjoy and speaking of enjoying languages I remind you once again please come to Montreal in August 21st 21st to 26th for the long fest and tomorrow my wife and I are driving into the interior to Osoyoos uh, where we're going to be golfing with friends these are friends that every year we go out golfing with so unfortunately I won't be able to do any my wife doesn't like it when we sit in the car and I listen to 
uh, Arabic or some language. She doesn't want me to put Arabic on in the car. And she even doesn't like it that, that, you know, I'm listening and not talking to her. I don't know why, you know, it's quite unreasonable. So for that reason, it'll be five hours in the car and a lot of golf. So, but there's so many things to enjoy. Um, I'll take a, break, a bit of a break from uh, languages, and, but I will try to make a video when we're up there. Uh, hopefully the weather will be nice. Thank you. Bye for now.